Oh, more. Um, I, sh I should have brought Aerith along for this bit, actually. I kind of I screwed up a bit. If I brought Aerith Why along, we would have seen some village else. here if a nuclear explosion happened? Is this I... like Ukraine, but worse? Here's another good question that this game never answers. It's, it's just never got out of the stage where they had no OHNS. <laughs> or maybe the reactions... No, well, the reactors' explosions just have a very small radius. Even if they did, then you'd still want to get out of there and you die of radiation poisoning and cancer. These are biochemical reactors, not nuclear reactors, so you would die of some horrible disease. Well, that means everyone in this town is about to die. I... I'm not quite sure about Tifa here, that's strange. Yeah, I mean, um, if Aerith I mean, was there... Sorry, go on. No, because Tifa knows Zack, obviously, hmm. and that's his parents. Don't you think it's owed to tell him, them a bit about their son who disappeared? No? No? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird. If Aerith was there, it makes that bit makes a bit more sense, because Zack was actually Aerith's boyfriend, not Tifa's. Yeah, but they did meet, so I, I'm not quite sure why Tifa didn't talk to the parents. That just seems rather so, cruel. Good question. The shop is bugged. The text buy, sell, exit runs off the side of the circle thingy. See, mm. there it goes again. Time um, materia. Time materia is actually pretty useless in this game. Because um, you already get haste from Big God. So there's no real reason to use it. You get slow though. Well, I mean, you can use slow, but I never end up using slow because the harder enemy is already immune to it, and the weaker enemies, there's no point using a spell on them anyway when you can just kill them. Well, at least that's how Death I play it. Death is the best CC. Yeah. Uh, in the PC version, did they give you the option to skip through the summon cutscenes? Uh, unfortunately they didn't, and that's part of the reason why I never really use summons that much. Yeah. The summons have the best cutscenes in the game, though. With yeah. Chocobo Mark, you have a Chocobo riding a Moogle, which is even better than, than a cat riding a Moogle. A Chocobo riding a Moogle charges at you and goes, Kapow! <laughs> oh, trust and... me! Like, the summon scenes in this game are, like, pretty awesome. It's just that they take so long that you just get bored of them after a while. That's why I like. Well, I kind, <laughs> I kindly request that there be a t episode where we use all of them in a row. I can do that, but it'll be painful to record. But yes, I'm. You didn't take this job expecting it to be easy, did you? <laughs> oh, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We Actually... must suffer, suffer for our entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course he expected it to be easy. There's nothing like seven blitzes in this. Hmm. I guess so. And now we take the long trip to... Um... One of my favourite bits in the game, actually. Cosmo Canyon. And this fight is easy. The return of the school playset. <laughs> Also, some dinosaurs before they've been mercury tanks. Nah, there's no tank ceratops here. It's just like kid designs and cardboard cut-out bushes. Oh, stone stairs! That gradual petrify. Yeah. Gradual petrify in this game works kind of different. It works the same way that Doom works in other games. In games like, I know it, in 4 definitely like, they have to use 3 versions of Gradual Petrify it, and then you'll be petrified and turn to stone. Gradual Petrify in 4 is really stupid, but... Yeah, it is. I really like it. Though, Doom is actually my favourite enemy skill, even though it's one of the most useless. 
and that's mainly because I'm a Dota 2 player, and there is a hero in Dota 2 that is inspired by Final Fantasy, and he has a spell called Doom, which works completely different. But still, whenever he casts it, he does the awesome line of YOU ARE DOOMED! So every time I use the Doom spell in Final Fantasy, I just think of YOU ARE DOOMED! Fun fact for you all. We have Vigar, and he's like, an, he's like Vivi if Vivi was a psychopath. He's like Vivi if he had the pers personality of 8-bit Fizz's Black Mage. <laughs> also, this whole bit is after, um, this whole bit is for, sorry, Red 13, and I, I did say Red 13 is my least favourite character in 7, but I do actually really like this scene. Like, I, I really like this quest, because... Like, when I was a kid, I was always influenced by, well, not, I wouldn't say influenced, I was always, like, inspired by Native American stuff. So, I really like this bit because it's inspired by the same thing. Yeah, because Native Americans had talking dogs whose tails are on fire. Of course. Also, this scene is just the best because, um, if you name Red 13 Nanakai, none yeah. of the dialogue makes any sense. Oh, no. Well, that didn't win on the poll, so I named him Red Thirteen instead. Did any of the strange names win on the poll except for Eric? Except for Slumdrunk? No. Slumdrunk won, All right, but then it didn't fit. Because you couldn't yeah, just remove someone, space. Yeah, someone didn't have the foresight to uh, just make a typo. Of course. So if you just remove the U instead, then it will look even more drunken. Slum drunk. I actually Slum never drunk. thought of that. It would also it would also be appropriate considering well, she's drunk. Cosmo Candle. Always kinda of love that name. Even the Native Americans say please drink responsibly. <laughs> Now they still do because they're not some American trying to run all the casinos here in California. <laughs> oh, that place is a map thing. A map thing, yeah. Does that actually do anything? Yeah, you collect it's them all for some surprise. Oh, Turtle Paradise, that's what it is, of course. It was this bit where I'd been yelled by Jim Cloud enough that I decided I'd actually do the Turtles Paradise thing. I think it's too late by now. Nah, you can still go back and get them from this point. You, I mean, you can revisit Midgar, but... Well, you can revisit the Shinra HQ bit to see that one, so I don't know. If worse comes to worse, uh, I can you... always use a save editor to hack the game. <laughs> would you like to explain yeah, what sure Turtles Paradise thing is for our viewers? Yeah, Turtles Paradise. Um, You have to collect all... Six, seven ish of them, and um, they're just random posters that you found, you find um, in randomly, pretty much. So um, once you collect them all, you get a few items for your reward. From uh, I don't actually know how because I've never collected them all before this playthrough. Uh, you go to Turtles Paradise and talk to someone. Yeah, I guess you do that. This is... I used to think this place was called Turtles Paradise because obviously I had no idea what the side quest was and I saw that sign saying Turtles Paradise and I thought, oh... Boomerangs here. This shop is called Tiger Lily Arms um, Shop and it sells boomerangs. <laughs> no, I'm starting to think it's less Native American and more, um... What's... what's what are they called? Uh... Aborigines, that's it. I think they also sell butterflies. The butterfly knives are a Chinese weapon. I'm very confused. Megaphones yeah. are a culture's weapon. Megaphones are extroverts' weapons because they blow everyone's blow everyone's ears off. Yeah, I don't. So think I have no idea what's going on. I don't think they care about consistency at, at, at all in this game, <laughs> or at all in any I kind of fantasy. Miss. <laughs> I kind of miss the goofiness of old Final Fantasy. 
Yeah, I'd 13 say takes so. itself too seriously. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I don't dislike 13, but it definitely does. Well, I mean, like... It doesn't matter that 13 takes itself too seriously, because we've got 14 now. Yes. Okay. Like Gil Gilgamesh loses Enkidu, so he paints a chicken green. <laughs> I'm Not wearing a pet monkey and on in my the head. And Guilty. in the fight against him, he turns you into a toad and has the chicken chase you and try to eat you. Oh wow. That that is just awesome. One of the quests has a um, disturbingly and... muscled old man named Godbert who isn't wearing very much chase down one of the characters and subluxes him. It's very strange. Also, it's like if Dio and Sabin had a child. Um, pretty much. Actually, that's that describes that's... Godbert pretty well. Yeah, He's and basically your first, always that's wearing just underwear and sunglasses. That's reason you have to rub oil into his muscles. It's really bizarre. Oh, wow. The quest instructions are that you must rub oil into Godbert's weary muscles. It's... yeah. FF14 is basically the old series. With all and he's also an important character in the... Uh, he's an important he's character in the yeah, string yeah. of quests that lead to Gilgamesh as well. No. And in the next major patch, that quest line is including Ultros. Oh my god, if Ultros is in it, it's just awesome already. I, I already knew it was awesome because of Gilgamesh, but you know. Oh, I just bought the HP plus material. You don't actually need it, but it's pretty nice. And I'm going to use it probably on Tifa. It's also the only way to get 9999 HP. So, Is it uh, the only so way? Uh, yeah, because it Barrett can get it naturally, but... Oh, he does? Yeah, at max level mm. it's possible for Barrett to get it naturally, but I don't think anyone else can. Oh, I guess it is the only way, because even if you get it naturally, like, there's still the material which drags your HP down. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. Do we ever get an explanation for why Nanaki's um, grandfather floats? I was no, we always don't. unsure whether he's floating or he's bouncing. I, I think he's actually supposed to be sitting on a floating ball or something. Oh, I see. I always thought he was like part UFO or something when I was little. <laughs> he doesn't have any legs. No, the green thing below where his feet should be is actually an anti-gravity generator. He's actually a scientific genius. Oh, th there's one thing that annoys me about this. Um, they capitalise each ho when he says ho ho ho, and I always find that annoying. It's to indicate the creepy ho in my mind. Ho, of course. ho, ho. This guy is like a mix of Santa Claus and Master Yoda. And funnily enough, he's actually one of my favourite characters. Oh, so now... Sorry, go on. Um, I just found it interesting, the sort of strange mysticism in Final Fantasy VII. It's... It's not as traditional as the older Final Fantasies, and mm. it has a sort of strange aesthetic to it. Yeah. Celestial Harmony, this is not what I'm expecting from a fantasy game, really. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not particularly fantasy-ish. It's I think this is when they br branched out and said, hey, let's be more futuristic and stuff. They started doing it in 6, but this was when they did it more, and they... They only really went back to like the more fantasy setting when they did nine. That was an actual sign. Sorry, 
Um, oh, yeah. That was an actual scientific theory for a while that as the planets and stars and so on went around then you could hear uh, the celestial harmonies which God used to compose the universe. Oh, really? Well, that was the religious one and then, yes, there was a more scientific counterpart. Before they realised sound doesn't travel in space. Oh god, why am I using Yuffie? <laughs> I think you're a little bit Sundera towards Yuffie. <laughs> Well, I mean, um, the only reason I used it was, <laughs> I, was because I didn't know that you have to have, like, you can change party in between this next scene and in, you, and, um, thingy when you go up to Buggin Hagen's, um, planetarium thing. So I think I changed back to Aerith later. Anyway, that was episode 7 of the Final Fantasy Wiki Plays Final Fantasy 7. I was Techno Obliterator. That was Cat Use, that was Some Color Mage, and that was Yuan Chosan. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you. <laughs>